One of the biggest risks facing humanity right now is the fact that we don't know if a massive asteroid is on its way to kill all life on Earth. This is because space is so big that even huge asteroids are almost impossible to spot. But now NASA is creating the best tool for spotting an Earth-killing asteroid before it's too late to do anything about it. Here are the details. NASA reports that it has green-lighted a plan to finish and launch its near-Earth object surveyor mission by year 2026. The NEO surveyor will be a 6-meter-long space telescope that will use infrared imaging to boost the chances astronomers have of finding large objects that might hit Earth. Every night, astronomers across the globe use ground-based optical telescopes to find new near-Earth objects, or NEOs, and determine whether they pose a threat to Earth or not. But these ground-based optical telescopes are only able to look for NEOs in the night sky. Currently, there are no known NEO impact threats to Earth for the next century. However, unknown NEOs can lead to unpredicted impacts, like the Chelyabinsk meteor that exploded over Russia in 2013, which went undetected because it came from the direction of the sun. The NEO surveyor will use infrared sensors that can help astronomers find objects approaching Earth during the day from the direction of the sun, something that can't be done from ground-based observatories. In 2010, NASA completed its goal of discovering 90% of all near-Earth objects larger than one kilometer in width. In 2005, the agency was directed by U.S. Congress to find 90% of NEOs larger than 140 meters in width. To date, NASA says it has found 40% of the objects within this range. NASA created a fictional asteroid and set it on course to hit Earth six months after being discovered by humanity's early warning systems. Earth's scientists worked together to stop the doomsday rock from hitting Earth, and this is what happened. NASA reports that it recently hosted a test to see if Earth's best scientists could stop an asteroid from hitting the planet. In the scenario, a fictitious asteroid was detected six months before it would hit Earth. The participants in the simulation considered various missions in which spacecraft could try to destroy the asteroid or deflect it off its path. Most options to deflect an asteroid, such as deflection via a high-energy impact or a gravity tractor or an ion beam shepherd, work by only slightly nudging the targeted space rock. If performed far enough in advance, that small nudge builds up to become a large shift in position by the time the asteroid gets near Earth. But participants concluded that such missions wouldn't be able to get off the ground in the short amount of time before impact. However, they found that using a rocket to deliver a nuclear explosion on or next to the asteroid could save the Earth. Unfortunately, a nuclear bomb would only be able to make a difference if the asteroid was relatively small compared to the giants that had hit Earth in the past. Currently, Earth's early warning system does inspire confidence. Comet Neowise, a 4.8 kilometer wide chunk of space ice, passed within 64 million kilometers of Earth in July. Nobody knew this comet existed until a NASA space telescope discovered it approaching only four months earlier. In 2013, a meteor about 20 meters in diameter entered Earth's atmosphere without warning. It exploded over Chelyabinsk, Russia, creating a shockwave that broke windows and damaged buildings across the region. More than 1,400 people were injured. Not all big, Earth-threatening asteroids are spotted before they come uncomfortably close to hitting Earth. And even for those asteroids we do see coming, it can still be hard to calculate just how likely collision actually is. Asteroid Apophis is one of these dangerous asteroids. Discovered in 2004, the 370-meter-long rocky blob is on NASA's Century List, a list of asteroids we should be keeping an eye on. Scientists don't expect it to hit Earth during its next close flyby in 2029, but they're worried it might slam into Earth in 2068, as it comes this way again. In a recent presentation to the American Astronomical Society, scientists David Tholen and Davide Farnokia showed their research showing why the asteroid should be studied in detail when it passes in 2029, to get a better idea of how close it will come to Earth in 2068. They say that work needs to start now to be ready in nine years' time. Time. While the risk of Apophis hitting Earth in 2068 is around 1 in 150,000, an asteroid that size would cause a blast larger than an atomic bomb, so it's best to double-check the numbers. Paleontologists are still duking it out over what killed the dinosaurs. 
Asteroid impact gets sole credit for wiping out the dinosaurs 66 million years ago, according to new research. Scientists from the UK say the 10 kilometer wide asteroid that made the Chicxulub crater caused dinosaur extinction without help from volcanoes. According to the study in the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, the research team modeled the Chicxulub impact, Deacon volcanism, and combinations of the two. The results suggest the asteroid impact was catastrophic enough to have destroyed the dinosaurs on its own. Deacon volcanism is the theory that a system-wide eruption by India's Deacon traps caused or contributed to dinosaur extinction. According to the models, Deacon volcanism would have reduced sunlight by just 5% at maximum. In comparison, estimates for the asteroid impact's effect is that fallout would have diminished sunlight by 15 to 20%. This figure is enough to have guaranteed the complete complete eradication of the non-avian dinosaurs. The new paper naturally leads to a round of trash talk by scientists. Lead author Alfio Alessandro Chiarenza of Imperial College London said of the volcano proponents to The Guardian, quote, I am pretty sure these guys will not take it easily. Princeton University's Goethe Keller was quoted by the paper as saying, when the basic assumptions of a study are based on cherry-picked data, the results are predictable and wrong. Scientists have a theory about what might have caused the tsunami that followed the earthquake in Indonesia last week to be so destructive. The BBC reports the 7.5 magnitude earthquake struck in the center of the island of Sulawesi, triggering six-meter-tall tsunami waves that crashed into Palu City. The earthquake itself was a strike-slip quake, which means the ground breaks horizontally instead of vertically. Scientists say strike-slip quakes often cause tsunamis that are less than one meter tall, not one as tall as the one that hit Indonesia last week. Scientists suspect the earthquake may have triggered an underwater landslide that destabilized sediment underwater, causing it to break free and tumble. Palu's Bay's elongated shape also may have amplified the effect of the tsunami. The earthquake and the tsunami have already caused substantial damage in Indonesia, with more than 1,000 people confirmed dead and many more trapped under collapsed infrastructure in Sulawesi. Researchers say a mega tsunami that devastated a Greenland settlement in June was triggered by a landslide. On the night of June 17th, a landslide hit Karat Fjord on Greenland's west coast. The landslide was so large, it produced a seismic signal that suggested a magnitude 4.1 earthquake. Large volumes of rock plunged a thousand feet into the waters below, shattering a glacier and triggering a mega tsunami with waves over 90 meters high. The tsunami devastated a nearby fishing village, washing away 11 houses and leaving at least four people presumed dead. A team from the Georgia Institute of Technology visited the site to collect information and are aiming to produce a 3D reconstruction of the incident. Researchers also determined that another landslide in the fjord may be imminent, leading authorities to evacuate three villages in the region. Though the cause of the landslide has not been determined, experts say factors such as those brought about by climate change may increase their frequency. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.